Looking for cheap and reliable College 25 Ultimate Team coins? Head on over to MMO EXP and use code Poodle at checkout for 5% off your order. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Poodle back with another CFB 25 video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be going over the best method that you need to be doing when building players that you plan on redshirting. So now, before we get into the video, as always, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We're trying to get to 30K. We're growing pretty fast. So I'd appreciate it if each and every one of you who are new here can subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know any other methods you may have for players that you plan on redshirting. Any other development methods you have, keep using the comment section like a public forum. It's helping me out with my video. Videos, it's helping out the viewers learn some new things and kind of just sharing ideas down below and brainstorming and of course if you haven't already give this video a big thumbs up can we get 300 likes on this video each like goes such a long way in helping this channel grow and it only takes you guys a second so I'd greatly appreciate it if you could like the video and of course if you haven't already my underdog link will be down below in the description as always if you sign up with my code it's quick and easy to do and it gets you ready for the CFB and NFL season where we'll be posting some picks and getting ready for that and being ready for that goes a long way so that when it comes out and the picks come out you're ready to go and if you haven't already hit me up on Twitter, reach out to me over there. You can DM me, ask me questions, be a part of the CFB community over on Twitter. So let's get into this. So first and foremost, if you haven't already, don't click off this video to go see this, but I do have a development video going over everything. It's called the ultimate guide to player progression. After this video, you may want to go watch that to kind of help you understand more of what I'm going to say here, but make sure you do check that one out. It go, It's a great explanation of everything, which will lay the foundation for everything you're going to hear here. So first and foremost, Every season, you're gonna go through and apply your red shirts, right? Now, I made a video going over the best strategies to red shirt players. Another video you may wanna check out if you wanna learn more about red shirts, but in essence, you're mostly red shirting freshmen and potentially sophomore. The point of red shirting is to elongate their career, basically. It gives them an extra season to develop. It allows you to then start them fresh with four years of development after that. It really just helps players build a better foundation before they see the field, right? Gives them an extra year so they don't end up leaving in their senior year. They now pretty much leave in like a senior plus year because they get the extra redshirt year. Now, something that people are forgetting here is that freshmen can play a total of four games and still be redshirt eligible. So you want to make sure that you are taking advantage of these four games. I'm going to be going through all the strategies. So stay tuned as I go through all the strategies for maximizing this. So the first thing you want to do is go over to your roster and take a look at who you plan on redshirting. This, there's a lot of different strategies here. I recommend redshirting guys who can't see the field year one. It's, it's very simple. Unless they have elite dev and they're a high overall. If they're a high overall, let's just say, for instance, you had a halfback right here and you have Donovan Edwards, he's, your, your halfback's not starting. So in most cases, I'm probably redshirting a freshman halfback. Now, if we go over to receiver, you see the receivers are pretty weak. If I had a freshman receiver that had elite dev, I'm probably starting them because I both need them on the field. If they're high overall with elite dev, I'm probably starting them. But first, go through and assign your red shirts. Once you've assigned your red shirts, you're going to want to go through and look at all their dev traits. You do this by hitting Y or triangle on PS5 and going out to the player in the bottom left corner, you see their dev trait. Their dev trait is going to be so important to decide how to go about this method. So development trait means they develop at a faster rate than, right? So if it's an elite dev, they develop at the fastest rate. They develop faster than a star, then star, then impact, then normal, right? If they're an impact or above, I'd recommend utilizing this method. Of course, if you have multiple players in a position, it's going to be a lot harder to do in terms of who you want to maximize the stats on. I don't recommend doing multiple guys in one position because if you're, if you're a wide receiver, I'd recommend spamming the one. So the way this is going to work is that what development trade does is basically they get skill points at a higher level. So if you look at the top up there uh, below Morgan's name, there's that gray bar that fills up with yellow as you do accrue XP and in the top right corner, you see your skill points all the way up there. That's how you accrue skill points. Yes, you cannot spend them, but the player will manually spend them themselves themselves whether it be on abilities or whether it be on ratings so you do want to make sure that you are accruing as many skill points as you can so your player can also upgrade using those skill points so the important thing here is that your players can play four games so sometimes people just redshirt players and a leave them on the bench all year not knowing you can play them four games or b start them those like first four games or randomly you want to be very strategic about this if you want to maximize the way you do this you can customize your schedule and go into your schedule and set it up in a way that works for you. So if we headed over to team schedule right here and you look at what you have as Michigan. First and foremost, narrow down your four weakest opponents. Now, keep in mind, you can customize schedule, so you don't necessarily have to just go with this. You can just customize it and give yourself some like FBS horrible teams that you're going to score 100 on. And what you want to do is assign your games that you plan on using your redshirt players for the four easiest opponents. You do not want to be playing your, your, your redshirt quarterback with elite dev at texas now the reason this is so important is because they have elite dev like i said they accrue xp way quicker through in-game goals you can't see these goals but it's going to be passing touchdowns rushing touchdowns passing yards not many interceptions not many turnovers completion rate etc so doing that's going to get them a lot of xp and if you do this like let's say you have a, a freshman wide receiver and a freshman quarterback 
you may want to start them at Fresno State. Now, that's week one right there, right, Or sure. Yeah, I, I get confused with week zero and week one. Apologies for that one, but week one. So you may want to start them there. And in this case, let's say you're, you score 100 because it's so simple to score in this horrible defense. Your quarterback could pass for 10 touchdowns. Your wide receiver freshman, make sure you're spamming the hell out of him. Could pass for 10 touchdowns. If you want to get really glitchy, I'd recommend turning off injuries for this. Again, it depends how sim you are. It depends if you're in an online league. You could turn off injuries too to make sure they stay in. Turn off wear and tear. You could toss for 10 to 15 touchdowns easily against Fresno State. And your rookie quarterback and wide receiver will have officially used their first red shirt game that they have a four and they're gonna get a crazy amount of xp especially as a lower overall with elite or star dev of course impact normal will get xp too but this one you want to mainly utilize this with elite and star players because those players will get the most xp and get the most bang for their buck and you have four games total so you can then go ahead and schedule them down the road for maybe the northwestern game and this is where i'm saying that like, this schedule is still not entirely the easiest maybe Minnesota, you may want to customize the schedule in week zero and make sure that you apply four of the easiest games like the FBS Pandas, Fresno State, and a few other teams that are, you're going to absolutely demolish. Because let's just say a full season for a normal quarterback might be anywhere from 30 to 50 touchdowns. If you could score 100 points and have one of those, you can even increase the minutes if you want to get real crazy, right? Again, it's, it's all up to you and your league and what rules you play by, whether it's internally or based on an online league. You could put the minutes up to like 12. You could just go crazy. You could easily get between 15, 80 touchdowns with your quarterback between those four games. If you put the minutes up, if you turn off injuries, it's all up to you. But that's the best way there to at least line up the game so that you get the best bang for your buck. This may end up with your player getting close to like anywhere from like 20 to 30 skill points among those games, maybe more. And then when the offseason progression happens and your player automatically upgrades, not only will they get the offseason boost from being a freshman, they'll also get those skill points to automatically upgrade, whether it goes to abilities or ratings, it's all variable, but that will allow the player to greatly grow. And that's how you utilize your dev trait. And this also goes, of course, for other players too, outside of just red shirts and freshmen, that applies to all players. That's the easiest way to grow them is by you get those in-game goals, you get skill points. Of course, freshmen with elite dev is gonna be the easiest only because you have more time with them. And then you can then start their freshman season, right? So think about that. In their freshman year, you spam them through four games, no injuries, clock up and you get all those skill points but then in their freshman season after that after their retro season you then start them for a full season and you can technically do this all again and that's the greatest way to really just set them up to have a great path to being a 99 overall because you're going to just accrue so many skill points by doing this you'll see very quickly even in some other leagues just monitor the players that you're using and you're doing well with you'll quickly see how many skill points they do accrue and like i said you go over here you press y on them you see in the top right corner you'll see quickly how many skill points they're able to accrue and you'll win you can win awards there's so many other ways to go about this but that's the best way to maximize when you're a red shirt there's some more strategy to this when you want to do it across their whole career but as a red shirt that is the best way to do it and make sure you are doing this each and every season remember every year bringing in new recruits so then in that second season you have a new set of recruits to build so you may want to then monitor that because you're going to have to put some players on the bench to bring those red shirt guys in for certain games so make sure you're doing this very strategically because if you don't do it strategically you're going you might end up losing out on that big ceiling you have let's say you do it that one year and then in their second season you're then benching them for a new red shirt guy so you may want to alternate maybe you're not bringing in some stud quarterback year after year maybe you're doing it every other year so that you can keep building that one guy just make sure you're being strategic and make sure you do it every season you may you may not notice you may have a cornerback that was like a four star or you may have a wide receiver that was a four star that you may think is like a third fourth guy and then you check them out and they have elite dev or something or star dev and you're not you're forgetting to build them and you're not putting emphasis on them so make sure you are checking that out another thing here is remember certain positions are harder to do this with in the sense like you may not be able to stat pad a defensive tackle right so if you have a five star elite defensive tackle that you're putting in those red shirt games you want to play him you maybe want to you you could sim it so you get some stats maybe you want to use him i don't know what the game plan is on that one in terms of like certain positions free safety you can just blitz them you can user them you could try to get in some stats that way get some tackles for losses you may want to user them but the point here is that it this works best with players you can use her easily like and you could stat pad like quarterback running back wide receiver o-line as well because i think they get stat, i get i think they get bonuses for like passing yards and rushing yards total for a team total offense so just having them in helps but keep that in mind certain positions will be a lot harder because you can't exactly you can't force an edge to get sacks unless you want to use them and try to get edge moves down that's a whole nother way about it but you can you can try that as well but just keep that in mind this is why my best advice for a lot of people outside of the four games is like defensive players if they're not a super high overall i'm probably red shirting them because i can't really stat pad them but offensive players if they have elite dev i probably want them seeing the field and at bare minimum like i said get the four games in with the red shirt designation and then put them back on the bench and also keep that in mind make sure you do toss them all the way on the bench like when you're doing your depth chart make sure that you actually when you're done toss them entirely out 
because if you have him as like quarterback three redshirted and your first quarterback gets tired or hurt and especially in other positions where like a lot of depth comes in if once they step back in that's another game so make sure you do toss like let's say you have Tuttle as your guy make sure you toss him all the way down like get him out of there toss him into this gray area because this means they won't they're not going to sub in manually these are guys that are out so make sure you are doing that and you'll notice a wide receiver like that happens a lot you may have him here if you run four verts like a spread offense these four guys after a few plays could get tired and this fifth or sixth guy will easily sub in here and there so make sure you do completely kick them out of your lineup and, and maybe even go through and turn off like automatic subbing in some instances because you do not want to mess up your red shirt designation but yeah guys that's about it for the video i hope this did help you out if it did help you out give it a big thumbs up can we hit that like goal that'd be greatly appreciated every like goes a long way if you're new to the channel subscribe let's get to 30k Comment down below, offer up any other advice or tips you may have to add onto this method or in general. It will help out everyone else in the comments, so make sure you're doing that. Follow me over on Twitter, and if you haven't already, check out Underdog. Thanks so much for watching. I'm out. Peace.